Hey -oh. Now today is going to be less of a tutorial, more of a display on what Daddy does in the daytime. I'm going to be taking this image and making it look like this. It's going to be a quick rundown. I'm just going to show you the basics of what I've done and explain a little as I go through it. All of that in Adobe Photoshop. So I started off with a picture of the bride, straightened her up a tiny bit using the crop tool. I then brought in an image which I'd made earlier, a composition of different landscapes. Uh, I put a bit of blur in there using the filter, blur gallery and field blur. So I dropped in a few points for the background there to become a little blurrier than the foreground. I wasn't too worried about this rock here because I knew that the steps were going to go there, so I left that in. Now, going to my bride image, which is positioned here. So I removed the bride using a layer mask. No, 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 you didn't remove the bride, mate. You removed the background to the bride. Total banana. And the way I did this was quite simple. The areas around here where there was the background uh, originally, I removed using layer mask with my paintbrush with black as my painting colour, which of course masks pixels, if I can just demonstrate this now. And white will bring them back. So I used black to remove these pixels. He means mask. It's a heat wave. And then afterward, I softened the edge of these steps, which I wanted to keep in using black. Now I kept the layer mask in place, as I always do, because I like to work non-destructively. I added a general darken, which just kind of brought things down a, a few pegs. Now I wanted the emphasis to be on the bride as opposed to the background. And this was done in the shape. In this particular case, although I don't use levels very often, I just use levels just to very quickly darken that background. And then I jumped onto the mask and then masked out with white the areas that I wanted to be lighter. So I wanted the luminosity to be retained effectively. After this, I added another tweak to the darkness, this time to the general around the edges kind of thing. I wanted to create a bit of a vignette of darkness around the image. Vignette of darkness, great band name. I then added a plume of smoke that just wrapped around her. I did this very simply. I used a light grey paint on my colour mixer. I chose my paintbrush, created a new layer, and then with my brush on a very low opacity, about 10%, I just slowly but surely built up the smoke by hand, avoiding going over this part of her body, but I wanted it to wrap around and go over the bottom of her dress so it would lead the eye it would swoop around her and down to the bottom of her trail i also brought the opacity down to suit see when it's on full opacity it's a bit too much so i brought it down to around about 60 ish i then got a picture of some stars i dropped that on and added a layer mask and painted away the areas where i didn't want the stars to be and i kept them in the places i wanted them to be so i thought that would create an effective finish I then added a hint of blue across the scene, again using curves. So I threw blue on the scene and then around the areas of like the sky and her face here, I took the blue out. Now the firelight was the most complex part of it. Again, this is using curves. So I produced an orange effect with the curves. I then hand painted white around the areas that I thought would capture the glow of a fire, perhaps just off camera. Again, using another curves adjustment layer, I added moonlight to the back of her dress. So going into the curves, I went into the blue channel, pushed that up, red channel, left it alone. Same with the green, slight tweak on the green upward, but the RGB was also pushed slightly upward to give it a bit of a glow. And then I added another tweak of darkness to it. Tweak of darkness, perfect. Trying to get those tones in there. I think when you're adding darkness to an image like this, you shouldn't do it all in one go. Apply it to small areas first, build it up into different layers. And then just to finish it, I found that the image was a little on the cold side. 
I added a little warmth, again using curves. This time red quite high, green moderately high, blue flatlining and the RGB flatlining. I'm flatlining mate. So I just wanted that orange glow in there. So what on earth have we learned today? Use your layer masks. Also use adjustment layers to adjust the light and the glow and the colour within your image to produce an effect like this. Perhaps you've produced some images very similar. I'd love to see them. Let me know in the comments section below. Until next time, I'll see you on the next one! <laughs>